Super Heavy is the lower or first stage of the most powerful rocket ever built, the SpaceX Starship. It produces an incredible amount of thrust to support the Starship in missions leaving Earth. All of us recognize this, and Elon Musk's team is launching this monster to orbit for the first time next month. But how exactly do they make this real? This is a sneak peek of SpaceX. Before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. Elon Musk has great ideas for space exploration, and one of his lifelong goals is to establish a human settlement on Mars. This is why Elon's SpaceX is going all out with a Super Heavy's design. With a gross mass liftoff mass of over 3 million kilos, it will be the most powerful launch vehicle ever. Standing up, you'd have to take a step back to view the top of the booster, which is the height of a 23-story building. It's 9 meters in diameter and composed of steel, just like the 50-meter tall spacecraft that rests atop it. But like everything else, the best part is always hidden inside. This relates to the heart of the Starship Super Heavy Booster. Known as the engine section, the aft end of Super Heavy is likely where the fate of early booster prototypes will lie. For the most part, Super Heavy is just a colossal duo of steel propellant tanks that is to an extent even simpler than its smaller Starship upper stage, which needs two types of Raptor engines, flaps, a bevy of maneuvering thrusters, and more. However, at the booster's base, SpaceX must design, fabricate, and assemble a nightmarishly crowded and complex mechanical structure capable of mounting, fueling, and powering 33 Raptor engines. Simultaneously, that structure and all associated plumbing must withstand the force and pressure of more than 2,000 metric tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen and the 7,500 tons of thrust those Raptors can generate. That's just the bare minimum, though. Beyond the extraordinary mechanical stress, it must withstand. Super Heavy's thrust section also needs to be able to survive the hellish, violent environment created by almost three dozen powerful rocket engines on one side, while the structure is effectively half-submerged in a cryogenic fluid, subjecting the puck and dome to brutal thermal conditions. Last, but certainly not least, the exterior of Super Heavy's thrust structure must be able to survive the mechanical and thermal hell of hypersonic atmospheric re-entry with zero cushioning of the blow. The forces involved are difficult to imagine. At full thrust, Super Heavy Booster 9's 33 Raptor 2 engines will likely produce more than 7,590 metric tons, 12.1 million lb of thrust making it both the largest and most powerful rocket booster ever built or tested. At full thrust, those 33 Raptors will consume more than 17 metric tons of cryogenic liquid methane and oxygen equivalent to around 10 Tesla Model 3S worth of propellant every single second. Including smaller secondary runs for each Raptor engine, Super Heavy's engine section will likely contain miles of plumbing for highly flammable, explosive, and high-pressure liquid and gaseous methane and oxygen. All 33 Raptors also need to be connected to Super Heavy's power supplies and avionic systems, demanding still more miles of wiring. Note that the booster's orientation can be controlled using cold gas thrusters fed with evaporated propellant inside the tanks. The booster's separation from the spacecraft is done by the Raptor's engines and releasing the latches. Luckily, the V2.0 Raptor engine is a major improvement in simplification, presumably making life a bit easier for the engineers that have to design Super Heavy's hellish engine section plumbing and the technicians that have to fabricate and assemble it. However, there's just no getting around the fact that a single rocket booster with dozens of engines is going to have an extraordinarily complex thrust section. In fact, to create this world's most powerful super-heavy booster, SpaceX has undergone dozens of booster tests and upgrades to achieve the level of perfection it has today. The development process of super-heavy is like climbing a hill from simple to complex, from low to high, and continuously improving. On March 18, 2021, Elon Musk unveiled SpaceX's first Starship super-heavy booster. At the time, Musk mentioned that Booster 1 was a production pathfinder, 
He also expressed the intention for Booster 2 to be the one that would fly. However, despite the initial optimism, the reality has proven to be challenging. Even after 16 months since its launch, no super heavy prototype has taken flight. And the reality is that in just over a year, SpaceX has retired five official booster prototypes from BN1 to BN5. We can see that this timeline has demonstrated that SpaceX has faced numerous challenges and technical complexities in the development of Super Heavy. Booster 4 was the first fully stacked prototype completed in August 2021 and was expected to perform its first orbital flight at that time. Unfortunately, Booster 4 and Ship 20 were retired shortly thereafter. Clearly, significant technical developments had taken place with the subsequent prototypes, rendering Booster 4 no longer their ideal choice. There is no argument when it comes to the commendable designs that were integrated into Booster 7. Instead of the 29 Raptor V1 engines installed on Super Heavy B4, Booster 7 is designed to accommodate up to 33 Raptor V2 engines. Therefore, Booster 7 can generate more than 40% additional thrust compared to Booster 4. SpaceX appears to have upgraded Super Heavy Booster 7 with a full set of internal header tanks, meaning that it should now be able to store all needed landing propellant in separate tanks. That significantly decreases the amount of pressurization gas required and makes it much easier to ensure that Super Heavy's Raptor engines are fed with an uninterrupted flow of propellant during complex in space and in atmosphere maneuvers. However, the outcome wasn't very favorable for Booster 7. It carried out its mission with Starship 24 and concluded with a spectacular explosion that shook the world. Deemed a successful explosion, SpaceX swiftly moved on to new prototypes with much bolder upgrades, aiming for the next launch. And standing on the launch pad now, Booster 9 has upgraded everything. And the hot staging is one of the thousands of upgrades to Booster 9. SpaceX specifically made this change to the Super Heavy Booster to prevent any damage to the first stage booster due to the thrust of the second stage. Commonly used on Russian rockets, the hot staging design could end up increasing Starship's payload to orbit capacity by 10%. In addition to the vented interstage, SpaceX will add another ring primarily for structural support. This payload nose cone will be connected to the Phase 2 Starship through a series of clamps. SpaceX is also using a heat shield at the top of the Super Heavy booster to thermally insulate its rocket. A single Raptor engine can generate hundreds of thousands of pounds of thrust. While the second stage engines might not fire at full throttle at the separation point, they will still deliver quite a punch. All of these new features truly serve an outstanding booster 9 design and promise another historic flight for Starship. So far, the company has conducted static fires with both of Ship 25 and Booster 9 and says the duo are ready to fly from a technical standpoint. But there are still regulatory hurdles to clear. Booster 9 and Ship 25 can't get off the ground until SpaceX gets a launch license from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.